All right, so our recap. So we started off with Cargath waking up from being injured. He didn't know where he was or what had happened. He found himself naked, still semi-bloody, and his leg itched. Uh, there was also someone sleeping in a chair beside him covered in some dried blood. After a quick back and forth, he was informed that his friends had left him in the care of the Temple of Terra, as he had some sort of infection going through his leg and normal healing wasn't working. He also found out that there was an explosion due to the runes that he had in his possession and that it had caused some damage to the temple. He was also told how he was finally healed. One of the 20-odd healers that were summoned to try to figure out how to save his leg, um, it was one paladin of Drax that did something no one had seen before. He managed to summon... Again? Uh, I'll get to that. I don't think you have been told his name. Uh, uh, he... You did tell us the last time. I'm pretty did sure it did. Okay. Pretty sure you did. Um, I'll yeah. Get to that uh, yeah, sorry. That's okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. He managed to summon Drax to help. And help Drax did. Cargath was then given a robe to cover himself with, uh, as in the explosion, most of his stuff either blew up or was too damaged to ever be used again. He was then slowly taken to where the explosion happened and found that someone had stolen the two items that survived. His rune bag, and the cloth that covered up one of the runes that was given to him by Abigail the Hag. While this was happening, outside, our bard Clark was slowly being taken to jail for attempted trespassing, attempted... Mm, we'll just say he did something stupid. Um... And then he decided to do something stupid again, and he charmed the guard. And somehow managed to talk his way out of getting arrested. Lucky for him. Um, so he basically snuck himself away. Uh, managed to meet up with the rest of his friends. And decided to go back and try and see Cargath once again. Uh... Back with Cargath, it was then that he was informed that his friends did come to look for him and one was arrested for trying to sneak in. And at that point, they heard a bunch of noises outside and the guards of Terra opened the door and decided they may as well let them reunite. After all this had Yay. happened, all they wanted was food, mainly Cargath. So they hit up the patio outside their inn and sat down to rest. Which didn't really last long because a nearby Warforged picked up an empty ore cart and threw it at them. And then they attacked. Uh, the fight went not too bad with only minor scratches and a powered down Warforged that they learned whose name was Hal. Hal's owner Dave came by and pretty much was in shock. Apparently, Hal had been working perfectly for many years, and this is just the first malfunction it has ever had. They were also introduced to one tabaxi that tried to help out. She was apparently sent by Chester just to keep an eye on things from the distance, but once the fight started, she had to help. So after some more back and forth, they finally got some more breakfast, then hit up a tailor to get Cargath some new clothes. He also ordered some new armor and from coffee. nearby blacksmith. Definitely coffee. During this, Chester called them on mm -hmm. their sending stone and ordered Lois to go help Ned with the relocation of the people of Allmark. She was not happy, but she did as instructed. So after getting some new stuff and the party then decided to head towards the Temple of Drax so that Cargath could thank the paladin that had helped him. Then from there, they were going to go on to the university to find Professor Artemis to find out more about what the hell's going on. And that's where we're going to start. You guys are coming out of the tailor shop. Uh, nice brand new clothing for Cargath. And you're headed towards the Temple of Drex. 
What would you like to do while you get there on your way? Hmm. Um, I'm just breaking in my new clothes, just stretching as we're walking. Just like, do you feel a little bit better thin, now? I do, but it's just like, what on earth did I do to blow a wall in a temple? It's like, what on earth happened? Because he still doesn't quite understand what actually happened. And he's just testing his leg as well. It's just like... I so, yeah. So he's a little bit confused, shall we say. But he's happy to be alive with both legs intact. He's had some food. He's got new clothes. And he's just, yeah. So... That's where Kargath is at the minute. It's just like, but uh, he's still very confused as to what actually happened and what caused the explosion. Even though he knows that, let's just say the runes were, had something to do with it, but obviously he hasn't deciphered them. So yeah, I'm okay as well as can be expected, I guess. So I was trying so to help, but as you, as you found out, I uh. I ended up in a little trouble. Well, I appreciate the effort. Dare I ask what happened? Well, I wanted to get in to see you. Because right. I heard something happen. I tried to convince a guard and it did. Let's say it did not go very well. Ow. Yeah, to the your persuasive powers of persuasion weren't quite so persuasive. No. Oh, well, I'm glad you managed to get out of it. Yeah, I am too. Oh, so, yeah. I was kind of watching all of this from the sidelines as it was happening and trying not to be seen or heard, but these runes, the rune that we saw on that robot were those the same runes that were on the stones uh, that exploded yes uh you wouldn't have seen the actual runes that they had on them uh, right but trying to figure out um i believe when you and lois were looking at them uh you did hear them talk about the fact that the same symbol was on both yes right okay yeah i'm intrigued by the runes and still trying to figure out how they fit into everything, especially since they were already part of the party, like they had been seen before mm -hmm. Anika came on the scene. Yeah. Well, so, I, now that we have beaten, mm -hmm. you have some new attire, I believe we should be off to the university. Yeah, yeah, I think that might be the right place to go. I can find this paladin later, I think. I need to thank him for saving my leg. Uh, find out more about what actually... Yeah, you would remember that the Temple of Drax is on your way to the university. Okay, so... Well, if you would like to, I believe we can stop along the way. It won't be too hard to do. Okay. Okay, yes, I, I, I would like that, actually, thinking about it. Okay. Yeah, from where you guys were, um, uh, you were very close to, um, like, the inn, uh, where the inn is just on the outside is where all the temples are. Um, and that's pretty much where, mm -hmm. in, still in the same general vicinity where you guys are, um, it would still be another, if I look at the map again, um, a good half hour-ish walk to the university from where you guys are. So yeah, okay. Be... Okay. All right. Uh, so, um, did you want to do anything before you hit the chapel, uh, the temple up, or are you going to head straight there? Uh, probably head straight there. Nothing else needs to be done. Okay. Um, 
as you guys walk, um, the, the outside has slowly uh, picked back up. Um, you would still hear a few people talking about the attack from the uh, Warforged um, about a half hour ago. Um, the cart is probably cleaned up by now. Um, so you wouldn't really see too, too many signs of a disturbance in the area other than probably a few extra more guards out and about. Um, so as you guys start walking towards the chapel, uh, in the chat, I have put a picture of the chapel for you. I'll stick it in the discord channel too. So it's a little bigger. Um, so on the outside, pretty much all the temples are semi lined up here um the outside pretty much is identical um other than a few different markings and a few different statues uh just to let you know where you are in the color scheme um for each will just uh, whatever faction sorry whichever uh like god that is worshipped um the outside will be decorated in those colors like with banners and whatnot um, so as you come up to this one, you will see a whole bunch of like banners um, that are black and gray with the symbol of Drax, the uh, chalice, the obsidian chalice. So as you guys mm -hmm. get up and walk in, where's my notes? Okay. Awesome. All right. So as you head towards the Temple of Drax, um, you walk in. Um, actually, before you walk in, um, Alric, um, Buster is going to flash you um, in Thieves' Cant um, a couple quick messages um, that is pretty much going to, you're going to understand he is not allowed in here. Um, so he is going to um, just give you a quick sign that he's going to wait outside. Wait. Um, you might be able to guess as to why he's not allowed in here, but um, that's for you. Um, so you guys are pretty much just going to see Buster just kind of look at the temple. Um, he's just going to look at you guys and go, uh, I'll wait inside. I'm not a religious kind of person. Um, so he is going to basically just, uh, you're going to see him melt in the shadows a little as he tries to hide and stay out of sight. So as you guys continue your walk yeah. into the chapel, um, big, large doors, uh, wooden doors, double doors, they're about 30 feet tall. Um, they do open mm -hmm. nice and easy. Um, and as you walk in, uh, you see it right in the middle of you, about 20 feet in front. Um, the floors are almost pure marble. Um, it's dark inside. Um, and sitting on a small pedestal is about a 30 foot tall statue of a chalice. And it is made out of pure obsidian. And sitting atop the chalice is a what you could tell to be a replica of the planet Drax. And it is spinning. It is hovering above the chalice, and it is spinning. It doesn't look like it's made out of obsidian. It looks more magical. Um, it's almost as if someone or something is projecting the image of the planet itself above the chalice. Uh, topography, it looks almost exactly like the planet Lunara that you guys go around, but it is dark. Not much water, not as much light, and a lot more volcanic activity. Um, kind of looks still in a development stage more than a habitable stage. This oh. place is fairly dark. Not many things are lit. Um, as you move past the statue, you are greeted by a very, very large open room. And you have a hard time seeing things. Even if you have dark vision, things seem to blur. 
you can pretty much only make out the carpet. Um, and in the background, you hear a little bit of a deep rumble. So as you walk by, you will see lots of stained glass windows on both sides of you. Still hard to tell what they are. Um, in the distance, you just constantly hear a deep rumble of voices. Like they're all chanting. It's a deep guttural hum vibrates through the room as you keep walking. On each side as you walk, and there's pretty much like just rows of church pews uh, made out of some sort of wood that you can't tell what it is. And all of them have cushions in them. There's about 50 rows on each side and there's nobody in them. As you keep walking towards the voices you can see, it's about a good three minute walk. It's a very, very long room. You see seven cloaked figures. Each of them are very heavily armed and armored. Five of them are doing the chanting. One of them is kneeling and one of them is performing some sort of ritual. The one that is kneeling is standing inside of some sort of wooden box. The one doing the ritual is a very, very large ogre, about nine feet tall. And you see him open a box and pull out a long cloak. He then goes over to the one that is kneeling and you can see that this one is a troll. He stands about seven feet tall. And as he's kneeling, he takes his current cloak off and replaces it with the new one. And as the troll rises, the five figures, different sizes, um, they all smash their weapons that they're holding into the ground. And I as that happens... That. Yep. Clark will get a little spooked and, and fly up and land on Cargat's shoulder is like you know yep. kind of like ah, I'm scared. I'm the, <laughs> yep. Gotcha. Yeah, I was gonna say uh, uh, he started walking in. Sorry, um can mm -hmm. I start ritual casting the tech magic? Uh it would take you ten minutes, but yes, yes, yeah. Sure. Yep, that's fine. Okay, thank you. Um so everything is still quite dark you can see the floor you can see the outlines of the pews everything around you seems to blur and the only thing that you can really make out is the seven figures in front of you let's say they're a good 15 feet in front of you they let you get that close so as the five figures that are surrounding this all grab their weapons and smash them into the floor you see massive sparks shoot out from the ground and all shoot into the troll. The troll rears back for an instant before he's engulfed in a very, very dark fire. Over the next minute, you start to see the armor, weapons, and clothes that he was wearing all burn. Everything on him starts to turn into molten metal and is being collected in the box that he is slowly standing in still. After the fire dies, you see this troll step out of the box without a scratch. He's not burnt. He looks quite healthy. The only thing you can see on him is his new black and gray cloak. And it is shimmering with a blue hue. The ogre then picks up the box with all the molten metal in it, nods, and heads back to the forge that you can now see off in the distance. The other five all start to shout, All hail the new High Lord. Hail the High Lord. The troll then claps his hands and a massive burst of light emanates from him and the room, and it is suddenly daylight in here. All the lamps and candles are suddenly lit, and then most of the rest of them all finally notice you. 
The troll then covers himself with the cloak and heads over. As the, as the light head, you know, bright light, Clark will kind of reel back, forgetting he's on Cargath's shoulder, mm-hmm. and you kind of see him oh, a little bit and then start flying. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, I can't fall this far. <laughs> okay. The room around you, um, ceilings are about 80 feet tall. Um, this place is huge, um, kind of completely different on the inside than the temple you were in uh, before. The outside looked almost the same. The inside is completely different. Uh, this is just one massive room. Um, you could probably fit close to like 8,000 people in here. Um there's pillars everywhere stained glass the stained glass windows themselves are 30 40 feet tall um, and there's probably a hundred of them on each side of you this place is just big and everything you do echoes everywhere so as that happens the chanting stops the troll itself um he stands about seven feet tall um heavily muscled uh greenish skin uh, his hair is a wild tangle of mossy green colors, uh, goes down to his shoulders. He has two massive tusks coming out of his teeth. And despite his appearance, he's got a very wide smile as he walks towards you. And you will remember his name is Thok, um, Throck Stoneheart. I will put that in. Right. Yep. That was the one I knew I you, know, you did tell us his <laughs> name previously. That's okay. I'll stick that in here for you. He, 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 but you said Throck. Throck. I said T H R O K. Was this the Paladin? I thought you said much ruder. Yeah. The Paladin who saved my leg. Correct. Gotcha. Who I believe. Yeah, yeah. I think. So he's gonna walk <laughs> over to you and cover himself with his cloak, and he's gonna go. Well met, travelers. I seen you come in, and normally you would have been greeted at the door, but these five here, and he's gonna point over, and you will notice that they've dropped their hoods. Um, you're gonna see yourself a goblin, two half orcs. A co- nah, kobold and an elf. These five here decided oh. for some reason to bestow upon me a new title just for doing what I was trained to do. And then he's going to look over at Kargath. He's going to take you by the hand and laugh and say, uh, Well, you I, look I, better I, than you I, did last I, night. I, How's that leg of yours doing? Uh, uh, well, um, it's still on my body. He's just, he's just gone really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> he's a little taller he's than just you. It's probably not normal for you. Really through his well, it's, it's just, yeah, so I'm just looking up instead of looking down. Mm-hmm. Well, he's going to uh, bend over and poke at it. Well, Sorry, you broke up. You? Yeah. I was just saying, um, I'll keep looking him in the eye, but obviously I'm looking up at him because <laughs> he's a couple of years. Um, yes, I uh, I just came to say thank you um, and ask exactly what happened for you to help, well, to make sure I'm whole, if it's not too much trouble. It's not too much trouble, no. Um, he's going to poke at it a little and look at it and go, I thought it'd take longer to deal, but it looks like you're uh, doing pretty good there. Huh. Um, while he's... Uh, feeling pretty good. While he's poking it, you're going to start to hear the sounds of a hammer and anvil going in the background, and you'll be able to tell that the ogre um, has poured all the metal into different types of um, uh, molds. molds. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
uh, and you're going to just see this massive nine foot ogre um, just start to use all that old material and he's making something. Uh, he's just going to look at you and go, well, mm-hmm. uh, I was just, yeah, I was just going to turn us throck. It's just like exactly what happened. Because he just wants to know, so he can just understand better, if that makes sense. And obviously, he's yeah. going to, and uh, he's just going quiet. Uh, he's going to stand up. He's going to think for a moment and go. Really, it's. I haven't been a paladin of Drax for too long. Um, I spent most of my youth and early adulthood as a cleric of Drax just doing certain things but I just I knew I could do more um I've only been the champion of Drax for about 10 years now um but there was 20 of us trying to heal you and none of us could figure out what it was so I pretty much just I reached somewhere deep within myself and tried to make Drax help. And he did. Some call it divine intervention. I'm just glad it worked. Above table, he used his Uh, one and only divine intervention on you. (laughs) Ooh. Yep. Well... Okay, uh, I, uh, well, it's time you, uh, speak to Drax. Can you send them my appreciation? I, uh, I can't imagine walking on one leg. <laughs> no, no, that probably, uh, would not go well. Um, yeah, if I can ever do that again. I will definitely uh, thank him for See. you. Um, in the background, you're going to hear a lot See. more hammering. And he's just going to look back at the ogre and shake his head and just go. For some reason, he's creating me a new set of armor to go with my title. I didn't ask for it. But these all, ah. they felt like apparently what I did has never been done before. So I am being given a new title and more responsibilities I'm going to assume which I'm okay with but if that's Hmm. what I need to do then so be it I had other plans but I will accept this calling Clark is going to kind of timidly since uh, Drex is uh, so much bigger than he is kind of (laughs) timidly fly uh, towards him Mm-hmm. And land in front of him, and reach his wing up. I want to thank you for saving my friend. I tried. I tried to help, but it eh, didn't go very well. I'm glad you were there to help him. He's just gonna look at you and go. You're welcome. It was troubling, troublesome, that none of us could do anything. Just all our magic just burned away. Never seen that before. So was that, was that to do with the runes? The fact that we, we could, you could access your magic? Ah, that thing. We're yes. still on sudden. He's going to uh, look at you and point to the ogre in the back and go, a lot of us are alive because of him. He's the one who did something and made sure that no one got hurt by that explosion. I didn't see the rune myself. Um, The uh, priest of Terra was the... uh, She's the one who tried to pick it up and see what de- determine what it was and as soon as she touched it 
that's when it exploded. Mm. <sighs> but Grogthar over there did something extremely quick. And yeah. Created some he's not so busy, could you... Yeah. yeah. Um, he's just going to say he's... Well, um, what was I going to say? Yes, absolutely could... Break up there. No worries. Uh, Grugthar, Hello? the Divine, is his name. Okay. okay. I'm going to make it up. He has been the High Cleric of Grugthar. Drax for a long time. Well, a long time for an ogre, anyway. Uh, okay. Okay, okay. Right. So, yes. It was true. But it all seemed to work out for the better. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What was this ritual that we walked in on? I know they're making a new suit of armor for you. Is it made from your own... Something was going on that we interrupted. Well, Grugthar over there is visiting from Maybell. That is where he lives and teaches. And... A long time ago, well, long time for some of us, um, there's always been a, we've never had one leader, and we don't really have too many worshippers and followers here in the Moonkeep, but Grugthar over there knew... It was time for all of us to be joined, and they wanted one leader. So the ceremony you seen, you only saw the end part, was me being elevated to that stature. Interesting, okay. It's not something I asked for, but I will do what I can. Our our religion is not for everybody, but we welcome all those who turn to Drex. Mm -hmm. Has it been ten minutes? Uh, we'll say it's been ten minutes. Yes. Um, I'm I'm assuming there's quite a bit of magic going on. I'm curious. Right now, on him, it's just his cloak. Is... Um, okay. The five people, uh, the other. Uh, uh, priests are, uh, you haven't figured out who they are or what they are. They do have odds and sods on them. Um, as you look around your party, um, Clark's loot and sword will glow for you. Um, the rune bag that Cargath has is glowing a little. Um, the few things you have mm -hmm. on you will be also. Mm -hmm. And a, I believe on Elric is just a ring. I think so. I think so, because your journal would be away, so she wouldn't see that. Yeah, he's got. I'm particularly ring. curious about what was causing the blurry darkness. Ah, you would have to ask for that. That is something you wouldn't be able to tell. Um, that would have been part of the ritual. Okay. can't remember his name. Throck. Throck, yes. Yeah, I would like to ask. Um, Throck, when we first came in, it was very, very dark in here. It seemed like I assumed that was just the status of this temple, that it's dark inside, but it was a very blurry darkness. And now it's like bright daylight. What What was, what, what's the norm there? And like, what was causing that strange darkness? Um, you're going to have um, the, let's say, the small kobold um, walk up to you and go, I can answer that for you. Um, sorry, that was me. Um, I didn't know who you guys were at the time, so I tried to just 
obscure the area so you didn't really see things that you shouldn't see but um, as you got closer uh, it wasn't too too terrible it's just more I just didn't want you to bump into anything as you uh, came by so I just kind of tried to just make one easy path for you to see sorry understand sorry if that was too bold of a question I don't want to nope nope that's just poke into your rituals and nope. traditions just yeah. kind of curious no I appreciate you asking yeah I know I just I'm really robot didn't I'm going robot sorry yeah hmm. is everyone else hearing me as a robot Nope. Nope. Okay. Then I think it's just you. Nope. <laughs> yeah. That's be Probably me. Probably for being I am UK. just on my phone. Okay. <clears throat> <sighs> yep. No worries. So yeah, the Cobalt, um, you're going to be able to tell, yeah. um, he is in also full plate mail, a uh, massive two-handed sword um, that's bigger than he is. Um, Cobalt himself is just in a nice, simple cloak. Um, but yeah, he is built like a truck for someone of his size and stature. And what is his name? You would have to ask him. He didn't find out. I was just about to ask his name. Sorry. And may I'm I ask sorry. who you are? <laughs> so sorry, I didn't ask. That's all right. With, lead with that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me? I'm still learning manners. <laughs> Oh, yes, that's okay. Um, I, I am just, most people around here call me Muck. M-U-K? M-U-C-K, Muck. M-U-C, <clears throat> as in, yeah. Yeah. That. Uh, that. Well, that's nice to meet you too, Muck. Hi. Yeah, I... You can, I, you can I, tell I, he's a little I, skittish. Yeah. I feel, I feel like, yeah, I don't know how I'm feeling. I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed by all this. Um, <laughs> yeah, the Mark's just going to go, yeah, it's this is honest. a first for us too. Um, it just seemed appropriate. Well, we apologize for interrupting your ritual. Oh, that's okay. It's done now. Um, yeah, no, we're good. Um, and as he says that, uh, Throck's just going to say, well, we're not done. I wish we were done, but these five <laughs> have already put word out to the other temples that apparently we're having a feast tonight in celebration of my new stature. It won't be done till then. Well, but well. at the end of the night tonight, if you guys are free, you are... More than welcome to join us. Well, I feel like partly responsible that all this has been heaped upon you, if I'm being totally honest. But we do have another another uh, errand that we need to sort out first. Yep. But yeah, no so worries. Thank you for the invite. I'm sure. I'm sure we will be back, especially. As soon as he hears the word feast, <laughs> he knows he will be back. Okay. Um, yep, he's just going to... Uh, but once, yeah, once we again. do have another errand to run. Okay. Um, well, safe journeys. Yeah. Uh, he's just... going to give you a, a massive handshake. And I will... I, I will return the handshake okay. and just bow my head and just say thank you once again. You're, you're welcome. And... Um, if you have any more information on whatever it was that caused that explosion, or if you have time we'll sure. to let me know yeah. what caused your injury, you let me know. I think that's the least I can do. Until later, then. He will nod in... Uh, what's the word? Not deferentially, but just as a sign of respect. No problem. All right. So as you guys turn, um, you will see that you are in a big place. Um, it's a long walk. Um, as you go, you're slowly going to hear, even on the carpet, a little bit of echo in the distance of you guys walking. 
um, a couple of the other, um, uh, the five that were cloaked are going to just like start spreading out and the kobold's going to walk you out. Well, thank you very much, but Yep, yep. No worries. Uh, on a normal day, I would have been up front greeting you because that's part of my job. I don't get many. You're the... <laughs> you guys are probably the first to walk through here in about a week. But... A week? I think today... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, last last week we had um, a bunch of new students for the university show up, and when a whole bunch of new students show up, they tend to like want to get to know the city and the whatnot. And we had a bunch of people in and out that day, but I haven't really seen anyone since. Uh, okay. Is that normal? Mm. Um, yeah, you would know that. Um, there's not a lot of people who worship Drax. Um, most are, uh, Lunara and others, but Drax, um, just for, it's more for like, yeah, like I have Drax's, uh, one sec here. I think I picked on, Drax. You did. Oh, I'm curious. Okay. Uh, too many buttons um yeah drax is the god of the unknown the unexpected and the unseen so mm -hmm. there's not many who choose drax because of that there uh, if there are most worship drax on their own or as he did say most are up in maybell this is just okay. a temple for those who want to come here who live in the city Drax is the god of what? The what in the end scene? The unknown. Can you repeat that. The unknown, the unknown. unexpected, and the unseen. It's unexpected and unseen. Yeah. Yeah. It's in the one note. I know, I know but I just... <laughs> yeah, I know. Tell me concentrate if I'm their, night writing. Their temple colors are black and grey. Oh, well, it's nice really? to meet you, Mark. Yeah. I will most likely be coming back to oh, good. visit. We will always take the extra help. And yeah, their holy symbol is the obsidian chalice. Which is why you have a massive one at the front. Hmm. Well, well on, to the, the, on to the next thing then. To the university then. Okay. To the university. <laughs> and he's even more... Kargat's even more confused. <laughs> it's just like... He's, just, he's, he's started questioning. Yeah. I reposted the map of the city. So you guys are up in... So uh, your inn is where the very... Uh, so at 11 is... 7 and 11 is where the gate is. Where you guys kind of first came in. Um, 11 was the jail... Yeah. The first nine you see is where your inn is, and seven, that's yep. all where all the temples are. So you'd have to, so, and you guys were kind of, yeah, I can't ping, but that's fine. Um, anyway, uh, so you'd have to go just back towards the inn and down towards w where the number one is on the map. That is your entrance to the university. Oh boy, on to the next thing. <laughs> yeah. And so you the also remember, sorry, the building. Yep. Sorry, I was just asking. The building in the I want to say pentagram, but it's not. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just the university. Yeah, it's pentagram. five schools. Five. Yeah, colleges. all the buildings. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was going to say. They're all part of the university. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's the Have five had colleges. Number one, did you say? Uh, that'd be the yeah. where the main yeah. gate is. Yeah. Did you say we're heading towards number one? Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. You would see, like, as you head towards the university, it's just like a massive arch that you go through. Um, so in the center is going to be like a, a common right. area where everybody sits. Um, and you will have uh, people directing students and whatnot where to go. Um, so as you guys get there... Um, right. A couple of you would know about the place. 
Um, but you really, uh, let me see. Uh, Buster would know probably the most between you all. So as you guys go outside, um, Buster will join you guys again. And he's just going to say, I'm not allowed in there. For other reasons, but you guys well, look like you uh, came out enough? okay. You were in there a while, but uh, things go okay? Yeah. Um, yes. Even though I have totally more questions than, than ever. But that's not why I went in there primarily. I met the person who saved my leg, so all is good. And... On to the next. Win win then. Perfect. Aaron. Yeah. We got invited to a feast. Ah. That 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 is the most important thing of all as far as I'm concerned. Yes. <laughs> Feasts are good. Okay. Um Feasts are very good. Have any of you guys been to the university before? No. I would hardly say I'm the most learned, so no. Um Alaric, you would have been with um, Buster at one point. Yeah, I, in Fees Cadence, I would tell him once or twice. Yeah. Um, Buster's just going to... He, he'll take the lead here for a bit, and um, he's going to say... He's just going to give you a good rundown of the school itself. So he's... Uh, right. He, he's basically going to say, All right, guys, so... It's school, so they're kind of boring in there. I never really went. But I do know there's five colleges. And they're all named after some important people. I think you know two of them somehow. Um, so as you go in, um, so number one on your map is mm -hmm. Artemis College. So the professor you are looking to see has a college named uh, after him. Not he, pretentious. <laughs> um, it was dedicated to him. So his studies, uh, Buster <laughs> tells you, are more non-magical based. Sciences, alchemy, electrical engineering, airship building, construct building, and basic artificer lore. Magical stuff. I will post all this for you. I know. I yep. too. Yep. So, number two. That's how he'll remember it. <laughs> number two. Um, so, as you go into the right, um, that is the <laughs> Tandron College, uh, dedicated to the Lady Tandron. Um, studies there are Druidic studies, nature studies, hunting, and Fae studies. Number three on the map, as you go in, um, pretty much all the colleges are a little different. Um, they all represent, like, the structure and everything about them um, vaguely looks like what you can study there. So the Artemis College will be more technology-based. You'll see some constructs there, uh, like working clocks, um, so you can see the time and whatnot. So it's a very, very... Um, mechanical building uh tandron college um is going to kind of look like marzell a little um you're going to see um it's overgrown by trees vines plants flowers you will see a lot of um fey creatures like students walking in and around there magnus college is number three magnus college you wouldn't really know too much about uh, who Magnus is. Um, they That building is for the nature of magic, the history of magic, and how magic can affect people around the world. That is the main studies you're going to have at Magnus College. If you guys give me history checks, please, um, to see if anyone uh, you know who Magnus is or was. What will a 16 get me? You guys are doing good. Ooh. Okay. So 16 as well. You all know who Magnus is. Magnus is a female. Um, her name is... Uh, she was the dean 
of one of the main colleges. It's also called the Lunar Sanctuary on the planet Lunara. Dean Helen Magnus. It is a college dedicated to her. Uh, so yeah, she studies, uh, studies there are the natures of magic, the natures of history of magic, and how magic affects people. The fourth building, um, this one, um, it's college is dedicated to Archmage Orator. This is the Orator College. You've met him. Um, here you will learn how to harness magic from nature. Uh, different ways on how to use magic, what is magic, and tapping into your inner magical ability. And finally, the fifth college is the college. It's just college is Lunara College. So it is basically a college dedicated to the planet. Uh, here you will learn planetary lore, the history on Lunara and the galaxy, uh, this is also where you will learn astrophysics, astrology, and astronomy. Mm. So I will post that oh, for boy. you. A shadow to be. So one joy of doing a strict saving campaign. Now I have plans on how to do colleges and stuff for D and D. I like the uh, sanctuary reference. <laughs> that too. I said, oh, wasn't a hundred percent sure. But it was. I'm like, yep. Yep. Not many people watch that show. Oh, I love. Oh, Sanctuary. I know. It's that was on my Saturday. Is that the one with is... Amanda Tapping? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I actually. Yeah, my, I know the uh, one you made. My Saturday I've campaign and went right over their heads. I have. Uh, 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 <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, I, I oh, actually have um, uh, Samantha Tapping as. Commander uh, Captain Carter in my Saturday campaign, and nobody had a clue. No, no Stargate fans. No Sanctuary fans. It was just like <sighs> I wouldn't have picked. I, I wouldn't have picked up on that. <laughs> That's but okay. I have watched Sanctuary, and I. It's a great show. Yeah, I, I great actually show. in World of Warcraft have a Morgan Druid named Henry Foss. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I, I, I have him as a uh, teacher in the other campaign, but they haven't gone to the sanctuary. I just have three players from the sanctuary. Yeah. So yeah. Well, that, for those. Yeah. So that is your five colleges. Um, so if you're looking for Professor uh, Artemis, you know which college to go to. I mean. We haven't met him yet, but I already have an opinion of him. <laughs> one, one, he's the brains behind the um, malfunctioning HAL robot. He also built the Not Moon really. Keep. Oh. Yep. When you guys first came Which through, I, just... I told you who built this place, yeah. and he was one the person who designed it. So, yes, he, let's just say Cargath has formed an opinion of him and he just keeps it to himself. Okay. Um, yeah, you would also know that he's very old. Very old. Yeah. Do we see any of those symbols, the runes, anywhere? No. Around? No. Okay. No. Yeah, you can give me an investigation or all that, but no, you would not. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if, I can't remember if these guys told you how, about the runes, no, because you wouldn't really, you would have only heard about it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you wouldn't know about the actual runes that they had on them, no. I okay, I'm just, I'm associating, my yes. only association with the runes is seeing the HAL robot, and I know that we're going to speak with the person Correct. that designed it. Yes. So. Remind me again, those runes of that course the explosion are gone right the stones with the runes on as far as you know yes yeah as in we don't physically have them correct anymore correct. But i still have the rune bag and the cloth that covered the one that we went to the yeah, boogie bakery the rune with. bag you have is completely different that one was given yeah. to you before you left yeah yeah 
And, so, and you know that it is now activated because I used it uh, when you were not playing that day. Okay. okay. Yeah. So you would um, eventually, once you try to use it again, I will finally tell you what it is and what it does. Um, you will Mysterious still need to get someone. Room. You you will still need to get someone to identify it for you, um, but you would understand the basis of how to use it. Detect. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, no worries. Um, and you would also remember from our last session uh, that Dave did say he was going to try and get a, a meeting for you with the professor. Oh yes, Dave. Yeah. I wonder if his... they put Hal in so... uh, his cart and uh, wheeled him towards the That's university. It. Yeah. But it's been about an hour and a bit since then. Just seems doesn't it seems like longer. Yeah. yeah, you're about a good half hour with uh, in the temple and a half hour getting close, so with an extra half yeah. hour walking, so it's been a bit an hour and a half since uh, you fought Hal. Okay. Yeah, so you haven't had any uh, sort of uh, short rest or long rest yet. No. But you're full, man. Semi healthy. I'm semi healthy <laughs> for sure. Yep. Still got a lot of healing to do. Mm hmm. Do, do. Yeah. So yeah, we, we I will we walk into the what's the word I'm looking for the college, <laughs> college number one. Okay. Um, I'll so... take colleges for one, please. <laughs> As you guys um, look around, um, there are probably a good like three or four hundred students walking around, going because it's still fairly early in the morning. Um, you guys had Brecky pretty early, so you're probably pushing close to 10 by now. Um, so yep. most people are either like working, going to class, coming from class. Um, classes do start early, so you'd see people going from one college to another college. Um, all different types yep. of races and stuff here. Um, but most of them are fairly young, although most of you are fairly young. Um, so you'd fit right in, kind of. Um yeah. Oh, from me being seven foot, you mean? <laughs> and as so, I meant to show this earlier. I do have. Where did I put it? So this is a good outline of pretty much what each individual college looks like, just different types of colors and whatnot. But that's about the size of each color college for you. Why is this place so big? Coming from a little four-foot owl. <laughs> I was going to say, maybe it's because you're quite small. Maybe. 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 <laughs> but, right. uh... So. All right. So as you guys head towards the lovely college... Um, you will see outside that the cart that Hal was in is parked in front of the main steps going up to um, Artemis College. And Dave's not there, and Hal is no longer inside the cart. Okay. Where's he gone then? Uh, you will remember well, that I he did say that he was going to try and find... I know. Them. Yeah, but he's not out front. Yeah. No, but I'm, like, gone a little wary. I know he's not out front, but... I know he said he was, but he's not... Anyway. <laughs> uh, so, I will try and get someone's attention. I think I will just... Uh, you would I know that, turn uh, Buster will let you Sorry. know that there is a um, um, as soon as you walk into the main college there is a um, like information desk and someone there to direct students somewhere to go ah yes yeah. I will go up to the info desk then okay. and just wait there patiently 
Um, as you get in there, um, you will see a, um, uh, who do I have set up there? Oh, yeah, look at that. I think Clark will actually, he'll, he'll walk in, but then kind of fly out and land on the information desk so he can be seen. Okay. And not be squished. <coughs> yep. <coughs> no problem. Okay. Uh, all right. So as you get up there, um, you will see a uh, fairly uh, late 30s, early 40s um, human. Um, she's going to look at you guys and go, um, students? Uh, not quite. But we are looking for the Professor Artemis. We have some business with him. Um, do you have a, an appointment with him? Uh, well, we've we've met Dave, and he said he'd speak to the professor on our behalf. So I'm assuming so. Um, who's Dave? <laughs> you did you? There's an empty car out the front. He bought the big oh, was, Hal robot. Was that his name? Ah, I never did get his name. He just came in ah. yelling and screaming. He's not here. Sorry, now I've got Chichi Chong. Definitely... <laughs> <laughs> that guy. definitely wasn't the droid you were looking for. Um, um, yeah, I don't know where he's gone, but... Yeah, his HAL robot went a bit berserk earlier. Uh, we were all, all my friends were in, and I were enjoying breakfast a few hours ago. Okay. So, um, he pretty much, I just, I didn't really, wasn't paying attention to what he was saying. He was just all over the place. So, I've seen him before, but just, I never knew his name. I, too many people. Um... He just yeah, ran, no, that's understandable. He ran looking for someone. I really didn't ask and stopped caring after that. Sorry. Um, but the professor, I don't have his schedule. Um, mm -hmm. I could show you where to go and find his secretary, if you would like. Um, this time of the day, the professor could be doing. Um, he doesn't do a lot of teaching much anymore at his age, but he's still usually either in his office or his workshop, or he's he does a lot of travel. I just I don't keep track of his schedule, sorry, but his secretary should. Um, and she's going to draw you a map of where to go to uh, find his secretary. Okay. And then I'll do the usual map thing of trying to orientate myself to where I am and because my brain's still a little bit scrambled. Uh, oh, I'm Evelyn, by the way. If you ever uh, need me for anything, I'm here a lot. I'll try to remember your faces. Hi. Hi. You're, you're going to be the yeah. one to remember. We don't get many of your kind here. Oh. It's very rare. Not many Goliaths around here. But a pleasure to meet you. Well, it's not like I'm it's not like I'm good at blending in, really, is it? <laughs> Let's be honest. So anyway. But no, it's nice to meet you too. Um, uh, his secretary's name is Winifred. Winifred. <laughs> Have then at the front desk. Um, it's a good. It's not too bad here. Maybe a five minute walk. Um, she's just gonna point you around. It's like he he's on the first floor just because his knees are not the greatest. But um, yeah, feel free to uh, see if he's there. If not, um, maybe take a look around. He's sometimes here. He's sometimes not. I don't know. That's or if right. you can let's find try, his... let's try his office first. Okay. Good luck. Sorry. What did you say? Oh, it's nice to meet you too. <laughs> mm. 
Yes. All right, so as you follow the uh, map that she's uh, drawn, um, you will be taking through um, like the main hall of the college itself. Um, so you're going to see like portraits of, if you took the time to look at them, you will notice that it's um, just like all the, the famous uh, teachers and professors and everybody who has um, come and gone through here over the years. Um, it'll have pictures of yep. the first construction of the college. So like you'll see pictures of it being built from the ground up, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you will also see mm -hmm. all the, um, uh, you'll see like a community board that has like events for certain different things for students throughout the campus, um, dates and times of um, right. like events that are going on, uh, when your parents can come visit and all that fun stuff. Same as every college. So did you want to look around yeah. some more or go right for um, the secretary's office? Can I investigate um, um, portraits and see if there's anything of like anything similar to the runes or any, yeah, any symbols if, at all that are strange? If you want to give me an investigation, sure. He's on a rune mission. <laughs> all right. So straight investigation you're not really going to see too many runic stuff um more mechanical um okay. yeah you would also know that yeah this place is very high tech like we're looking um like on uh, like late 1800 early 1900 earth technology okay yep um So yeah, um, that's the majority of what you're going to see. You're going to um, see pictures, portraits of a lot of people. None you would really notice, um, but you will see a portrait of the professor. Um, it's going to be one of the bigger ones. Um, Gnome, the picture looks he, like he's youngish. Um, you don't really get too much other than the face of uh, Professor Artemis from the picture itself. Um, it'll just say um, this uh, building is dedicated to our uh, one of our main buildings, builders, main artificers. Um, just basically the person who inspired a lot of people to um, more learn the non-magical side of how to do things. But nothing runic, no. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that was very, very strange then to find that on yes. a construct that came from here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like constructs themselves are... Um, they are built with like a type of runic magic almost to keep them going, but not the type of runes that um, these guys have been seeing. Okay. A different school of magic, a different school of like runic magic almost. Okay. Yeah. So as you guys, they, uh, yep. Sorry, Clark's Clark's going to walk up to the to the uh, the office door and just kind of talk 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 talk. With his wing. Okay. So as you smack on it and smack on it, um, takes a minute. You're going to hear some bunch of rustling in the back and go, hold on, hold on. Um, you're going to hear someone trip over a whole bunch of stuff um, and then just slowly open the door and a tiny little gnome. Uh, she's about three foot nothing. Um, her hair is just like red hair but it's just like everywhere tangled um she's just in a simple uh cloth robe um mostly white with a little gold trim um she's gonna have a whole stack of like uh, in her hands of paper and um like journals and whatnot and she's just gonna go um hi sorry can't talk um anything important i need to get to uh the professor's here for some reason today and he's doing a class he's doing a class well we actually came looking for the professor 
Oh. We have some questions about a a uh, automaton that uh, happened to try to uh, You're take with us Dave. out. Here with Dave. Yes. Okay. Yes. I hoped you came earlier, but anyway, um, Dave's been, a couple guards came and grabbed Dave a while ago. Um, I haven't seen him since. Um, I believe, I think I heard them say that they took um, the uh, the Warforge to um, the professor's workshop to get looked at later. I'm, I'm not too sure. I just... I got a message that he's in the middle of teaching class. I didn't even know he was supposed to be here today. I haven't seen him in a while. So if you, you follow me, his... yeah, follow me. I got to go find him myself. So please join me. Um, I'm told he's in one of the main uh, lecture halls. Well, do you happen to know where his workshop is? Um, yeah, it's off campus. He's got an office here, but his workshop is off campus. It's in the keep, but it's off campus. Okay. Um, who are you well, guys, by the way? Are you students or you don't look like students? What do you mean? I'm I'm, no, I'm just I'm here to learn. Let's just say you're auditing the class. We'll go with that. I don't know what he's teaching today. He's anyway. Um, she's a little flustered. You could tell. Um, uh, this was sprung on her, and to be his secretary, she's a little angry. Um, so she's going to um, just brush by you guys, um, just and give you a, a come with me, come with me. So in roll twenty, um, you guys go for a little bit. Um, it's going to be a good five minute walk. Um, you're going to go down some stairs, up some stairs, around some corners and whatnot. And you're finally going to come into a small lecture hall. And you should be able to see a new map. Do you see the new map? Yes. It's a lot of NPCs. Sure is. <laughs> so, uh, bottom right hand corner is your tokens. Hopefully, you can move them. Where are we entering from? Um, from, you'd be on the right hand side. Um, so, you'd be coming through, you'd see a couple doors, <laughs> um, and you're going to be coming through uh, just. You'll see, like, once you're up there, there's, like, doors on the left-hand side, doors on the right, but you're going through the right. It just all depends on which side of the college the kids are coming from. I'm stuck in the middle with you. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so as you go in, um, this is a, so um, you're going to be going downstairs, so you're going to see, it's just like your normal lecture hall. Um, this one is fairly um, well-built. Um, and a lot of, let's go with weird technology that some of you, or I should say all of you have never really seen before. Um, this place, uh, has electricity going through it and there's lights. Um, there's a lot of, um, automated stuff that you probably would think is magical, but is not magical. So as you come through. And give me one sec here. I can't remember where I put everything. All right. So, um, as you come through the doors uh, to the lecture hall, you will notice a lot of smoke coming from the bottom where the professor is. Uh, him and another person are putting out a fire. Uh, you're going to see the uh, little gnome old gnome, um, just start trying to wave some of it away with um, some sort of mechanical fan that he's holding. And you're going to hear, hear him um, quite, even from the back, he's going to go, way too much heat. Oh, we must we must come up with a new way of cooling this before we release it to the public. Just take it back to my workshop, I'll go over it again later. 
and you're going to see um, his uh, uh, assistant down there just grab this massive machine that's on wheels. Um, there's a couple students are going to get up and help take out this very large metal object. It's covered in wires, lined with wood, um, and they're going to just wheel it out of the shop. And uh, the professor is just going to look up and go, sorry about that, students. It looks like I, I got a little bit more work to do on that one. But let's let's start back to what you asked me earlier. Since I know you're all new, I haven't been here in a while. Sorry. How does all this work? Well, there's a long version and a short, easy version. I'll start you guys off with the simple version for all the new folks that just came in. Yes, yes, come in. Do come in and take a seat. Yes, you five in the back. I can see you. Just sit somewhere. This class is almost done, but if you want to audit at the end, by all means, stay and try to learn something. So he's going to go out um, behind something. Uh, a few minutes later, he's going to come back with two other objects on a cart. And another person's going to follow him out with some sort of large bicycle with no wheels on it. Uh, then he's going to attach a long chain from the bike to one of the mechanical objects and I'm going to enlarge the two things that you see here so on his desk is what looks to you like you have no idea it kind of looks like a lamp post almost with um, some sort of wick inside you're not too sure and on the other is a weird metal thing covered in copper and screws and you're really not too sure what the hell it is. Uh, but you'll see copper wires going from that to the other one. And then they're going to attach a bunch more copper wires to the bike. So he's going to look up and... Clark isn't familiar, but Abe is. Yeah. It's old school generator and lights. <laughs> so he's going to just look up to you and go, this is going to be the easy version. And we're going to tell you what the easy version is after we take our break.